my name is Catalina Santa Maria, and I'm the Forest Program Officer at the CBD Secretariat. So we're, you're joining us at uh, the CBD uh, COP13 here in Cancun, Mexico. So today marks a very important day for the CBD, uh, given that this is the first time we have a gender day specifically focused in the Rio Conventions Pavilion. And the pavilion has been a long time effort among several partners, uh, it, which include the JEF, the CBD Secretariat, the uh, UNFCCC Secretariat, and the UNCCD Secretariat, in an effort to bring to, to different audiences, different publics, uh, some of the key issues that are happening around biodiversity, conservation, and sustainable use. And gender uh, is one of the key issues that we'd like to emphasize today in this special day on gender. So gender is an important component in sustainable wildlife management and it's something that was manifested today in the launch of a new publication, a new fact sheet that the CPW, this is the Collaborative Partnership on Sustainable Wildlife Management, a partnership made up of 14 different international organizations, have collectively joined forces to bring to you the best knowledge, the best uh, available science on the issues of wildlife management and how gender plays a role, uh, why it's important, and what are some of the responses that uh, countries and organizations are uh, using in their different initiatives to demonstrate uh, gender in, in different applications on wildlife management. So we have heard a mixture of messages today. Uh, we had a very diverse panel uh, that comp was composed of experts from the CPW uh, and many countries that uh, have been taking strong efforts to integrate gender into their practices, into policies, into natural resource management, and also demonstrating that there are challenges ahead and that uh, there are different ways to tackle uh, the issues of gender. And among the, the key focus uh, areas that were emphasized in, in the press uh, brief and the fact sheet that was prepared were the issues of sustainable livelihoods, uh, an issue that was also emphasized in an example on uh, the all-female uh, patrolling of the Black Mambas, which is an anti-patrolling unit in South Africa and how uh, this example for ex uh, can provide a, a way for bridging uh, wildlife conservation to local communities. There were other examples as well on the implications of gender to food security and to nutrition and to health, human health. And uh, a, lot of this, um, a, a lot of this science, a lot of this studies are coming from partners like C4, where these issues are resonating in the bushmeat uh, sector and the need to look for new solutions uh, which uh, relate to governance and which relate to statistics that are important for us to understand which species uh, have uh, an emphasis and have a, a role in, in this type of, uh, uh, of issue. Uh, other, other priorities that uh, were emphasized today also include the issue of human wildlife conflicts and how different countries are tackling this issue uh, through uh, different gender responsive uh, uh, feedback and, and uh, initiatives that have been carried out. And we heard a lot also of uh, the gender dynamics in illegal wildlife trade, uh, where in some countries uh, women play a strong role in the trafficking of illegal wildlife. Uh, while in, in issues of poaching, there has been a more male-dominant um, interface and, and, and experience. Uh, we have also seen a, a very important role in decision-making and in the institutional building uh, that many countries are trying to factor in uh, a more diverse setting uh, in management and in, uh, in institutions where uh, women are playing a stronger role, are becoming more empowered, and are finding new tools to uh, take on more leadership roles. And I think all these issues, uh, including ownership, go governance, uh, land rights, uh, they resonate among various different countries that spoke today and are picked up in the policy brief that the, that the CPW has prepared.